so welcome students to this eighth lecture on semiconductor science and today we are going to discuss about firstly the solar cell and secondly about semiconductor laser now here as you can see i have drawn three figures now let's consider this one first this is the iv characteristics of a solar cell now the interesting part is this that here i am considering or i am going to emphasize this fourth quadrant now the fourth quadrant of this current voltage characteristics as you can see in this quadrant the value of the current is negative the value of the current is negative whereas the applied voltage or the voltage is in the positive quadrant so in this fourth quadrant of the iv characteristics the value of the current is negative while the value of the voltage is positive now why i am discussing this particular quadrant as because not only this is the iv characteristics for a solar cell but it is of utmost importance today in this lecture why we are talking about this fourth quadrant now as you can see that for the value of the voltage at zero that is for v equals to zero the current has got a maximum value while as the voltage is increasing the current going to decrease so the current will go on decreasing from a more negative value to a positive value as well as you can say it that this means the current is going to be greater but as because the characteristics of the solar cell is of this only this uh, this is actually related to this fourth quadrant of operation now so the current has gone from a more negative value to a positive value at this particular quadrant now if you consider that a current is developing or a current is flowing from a negative terminal to a positive value from a negative value to a positive value or if you consider that this actually means that a current is flowing from the negative terminal to a positive terminal and you can really appreciate that this actually happens in a battery in a battery cell actually the current is flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal right so here when i am considering this particular section that is the fourth quadrant fourth quadrant of this iv characteristics the current is actually goes on from a more negative value to a positive value and as this happens in side a battery or in a battery the current is always flowing from the negative to the positive terminal so if you can relate these two things that is in a solar cell at the fourth quadrant of the of its iv characteristics as because the current is going from a more negative value to a positive value as the case is for a battery in which a current is always flowing from a negative terminal to a positive uh, terminal now the question arises that why this analogy is made that why i am trying to relate this characteristics of the solar cell with a battery actually in a battery or for from a battery what we can expect 
we expect or we we expect an energy we drive an energy from a battery so a battery actually supplies a form of energy or a battery actually supplies energy so if i relate this if i can relate this characteristics of a battery with the iv characteristics of a solar cell then why can't i equate this particular this particular property of a battery that a battery can deliver energy to us so that means that a solar cell or from a solar cell we can receive or we can get a form of energy actually this is a solar cell a solar cell is an electronic device or rather it is an opto electronic device in which light is made incident on the cell and from which current or from which electrical characteristics of current is derived so actually solar cell is delivering some sort of energy or some some form of electrical energy to us and that is the importance of solar cell we all know that so i am actually relating this fourth quadrant of the characteristics for a solar cell with the characteristics or with the uh, with the current direction of a battery this is this is actually uh, a concept what i am going to deliver it so this is the fact or rather in this first figure i am actually depicting you i am actually shown you that why this fourth quadrant of the iv characteristics is of utmost care or is of utmost importance okay have you got it is it clear to you is it okay okay fine so let's move on to the second figure that is on the right side <clears throat> of your of my board that is here i have drawn these iv characteristics but with two optical intensities or with two light in intensities incident on the solar cell the first one the first one as you can see this is known as the dark illumination that means when no light is fallen or when no light is incident on the solar cell as you can see the value of the current from the solar cell is actually very small or rather in the if you consider it in this particular quadrant then you will find that the value of the current is zero and this is the this is the case that whenever no illumination or whenever no light is incident on the solar cell we cannot we cannot get a value of current but now with illumination so when light is incident on the solar cell this looks like similar to this characteristic that is a current is flowing so this is the illumination case that this is the characteristic with illumination and this one is the characteristic when dark or with no incident light now let's talk about this particular picture or this particular characteristic actually this is nothing new this is not at all a new figure what i have drawn here i have actually made this particular this particular characteristics with a 180 degree shift i have shifted this current axis with respect to this voltage axis and i have shifted it for 180 degree and that makes this particular characteristics and then this current axis which is actually in the negative portion it actually goes up and that is the characteristics now looks like now this one is the actual characteristics
for this region. So here, as you can see that one is the voltage VSC, that is the short circuit voltage. ISC is the short circuit current. And two more things that here appeared as VM and IM. VM is the maximum voltage and IM is the maximum current. But let's forget about this because I am not going to discuss about this particular characteristic right now. So what I am going to discuss about this uh, solar cell, <clears throat> that is the curve which passes through the fourth quadrant of the IV characteristics. And uh, as the curve passes through the fourth quadrant of the characteristics, it means that the device can deliver an, a power, a deliver output power. Now, these characteristics in the fourth quadrant actually shown here more, more clearly, uh, which is obtained, as I have told, that which is obtained with the rotation of the current axis by 180 degree around the voltage axis. Oh, sorry, this is... This is not VSC, this is actually VOC. Now, what is this VOC? VOC is the open circuit voltage. VOC is the open circuit voltage. And from the circuit theory or from the basic concept of the circuit theory, we all can derive that when a circuit is made open, that is when the circuit, when the voltage actually equals to, when the uh, circuit is made open, the current flows through the circuit is actually zero. So here you can find that the value of I, value of the current is zero. So this is actually the open circuit voltage. And this one is the short circuit current. This one is the short circuit current. And again, and again, as you can consider, you may consider that when the voltage is zero, the current is maximum. And that is the case for a short circuit element. So here, the voltage is uh, designated as the open circuit voltage and the current is the short circuit current for a solar cell. And as I have told that, here IM is the maximum current and VM is the maximum voltage. So the power delivered by the device can be maximized by maximizing the area under the curve. That is uh, what uh, that is the value of the power is maximum under this particular section. So the product of VM into IM is maximum. Now, by properly choosing the load resistor, the output power can be as high as 0.8 into Vm into Im. Okay. Now, let's uh, forget about this. I am just going to show you a more interesting figure. That is, now I am going to show you that the energy band diagram. The energy band diagram for two cases, that is for the dark case, that is when no light is incident on the solar cell and with and for the illumination case, that is when light is incident on it. So you can recall this as this is the, this is the case. This is the case for a PN junction. Now, this one is the Fermi level. You all known about these facts that this is the Fermi level. This one is the valence band. So I am mentioning it as EV. This is the conduction band. So this one is EC. And if an electric field is applied here, now this value it is known as vbi 
so this is the case under complete darkness this is the energy band diagram of a solar cell under complete darkness <clears throat> now in the dark <clears throat> drift of thermally generated minority carriers across the junction constitutes the reverse saturation current at zero bias this is exactly balanced by a small value or small flow of majority carriers in the opposite direction result in zero net current so in a pn junction diode as we have already came across a pn junction diode in a pn junction diode positive charges are here in the p type side and negative charges or electrons are here in the n type side <coughs> now <clears throat> as uh, in our seventh lecture we have came across the thermally generated electron hole pair or excess carrier and this excess carriers that is the minority carriers across the junction constitutes the reverse current that is the electron uh, that is the minority carriers for the n type side that is the positive charges or the holes and the minority carriers for the p type side that is the uh, that is the electrons they actually constitute the reverse saturation current but at zero bias at zero bias these minority carriers are actually uh, nullified or the effect of this flow of minority carriers across the junction are actually nullified by the flow of majority carriers across the junction so as you can see that when there is complete darkness or when there is no light incident on the solar cell the current value is actually zero so this zero current arises due to the majority carriers or the motion of majority carriers across the junction is actually counterbalanced by the flow of minority carriers or the or by the flow of those thermally generated minority carriers across the pn junction so this makes the current when the solar cell is under no illumination actually zero okay got it is it clear why the current under darkness for a solar cell is zero yes sir understood okay okay fine so now let's consider the case under illumination now at zero bias what i have talked that the under zero bias this is uh, the flow of minority carriers is actually counterbalanced by the flow of majority carriers in the opposite direction and which results in a net zero current but under forward bias the net direction of current is from the p side to the n side now so let's draw the characteristics when the pn uh, when the solar cell is under forward bias so this is the case or this is the Uh, this is the energy band, band diagram under no bias now we are considering or i am going to draw the energy band diagram for forward bias case now as we have already as we know that when the when a pn junction is forward bias actually the contact potential reduces and uh, this reduction of the contact potential is equals 
to the potential what we have applied outside from the uh, pn junction now here the potential what i am applied here is known as the open circuit voltage so this potential is actually reduces to vbi minus voc <clears throat> and here when the forward bias is applied the fermi level actually detached so this one is the fermi level for the p type side and this one is the fermi level for the n type side so this is efn this is the valence band this one is the conduction band this one is the conduction band this one is the fermi level for the p type and this is the valence band so the amount of energy by which these fermi levels are detached it is actually equals to the applied potential that is voc so here you can see that the contact potential or the potential appeared across the junction is reduced by an amount voc now what happens the the interesting fact is that now the now an electron from the conduction band side now an electron from the conduction band side what the electron feels the electron sees that there is a downhill there is a downhill as it can move across the junction to flow into the conduction band of the n type side so an electron remember this is an electron actually from the p type side this is an electron from the p type side and it it says that if the electron moves or if the electron flows from the conduction band of the p type side to the to the conduction band of the n type side it actually has to move downhill so downhill movement means that is the energy is actually reduces or the energy is actually low in the n type side and as a result the electron is eager to move from the conduction band p type side to the conduction band of the n type side actually this is the difference now talk about now we are going to talk about the hole characteristics now again a hole from the valence band of the p type side it actually moves towards the towards the uh, a hole from the n type side valence band actually moves towards the uh, valence band of the of the p type side so under forward bias as we know that <clears throat> as we know Uh, here the flow of direction of net direction of flow of current is from the p side to the n side now if the junction is illuminated with by photons with h nu greater than equals to the band gap energy that is eg additional electron hole pairs are created with a generation rate capital g now whenever a pn junction is under forward bias let's talk about this picture again whenever a pn junction is under forward bias what happens we have already discussed a lot about the pn junction and we all know that that whenever a forward bias is applied the majority carriers of the p type side that is the positive charges are actually going to move or tends to move towards the n type side as well as the electrons that is the majority carriers of the n type side actually tends to move towards the p type side and that uh, that makes the current that makes the current for a pn junction under forward bias so under forward bias always a current is flowing from the p type side to the n type side and here in this case what i have talked about i have talked about the carriers that is 
electron the flow of electron in the p type site and as well as a flow of hole in the n type site that is i have already discussed the flow of the flow of minority carriers in the pn junction so number 1 as we know already we have uh, we know the fact that for a pn junction under forward bias every time there is a flow of majority carriers from the p type side to the n type side as well as from the n type side of the junction to the p type side and as the current direction is actually equals to the direction of the whole flow so a, a, a positive a current actually flows from the p type side to the n type side of a pn junction whenever it is forward by so this is a known fact now so i have talked about a quite quite unknown fact that is in this particular figure i have uh, discussed in this particular figure the flow of electrons and the flow of holes but the flow of electrons i have mentioned in the p type side as well as the flow of electron in the n type side so a flow of electron if a flow of electron happens from the from the conduction band of the p type side to the conduction band of the n type side or a flow of hole happens from the n type valence band to the p type side of the valence band what actually we get we get a current we get a current but this is actually opposite in the direction of this particular forward bias current and this current is meant or this current is totally composed of the minority carriers but why i am talking about or why i am i am deliberately mention this flow of minority carriers why i am talking this have you any any clue why i am talking about this minority carrier component whenever a pn junction is forward biased why i am mentioning have you any clue let's try have you any clue my question is why i am talking about why i am talking about the flow of minority carriers in a pn junction when the junction is forward biased why this is of an important term this is of utmost importance now why i am talking this have you any any clue let's try current flow for the minority uh, carriers yes madhumita that is true that is true that i am talking about the current flow due to the minority carriers in the solar cell but i am i am asking you that why i am talking why i have taken these particular flow of minority carriers in a solar cell okay so let's let's okay thank you 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 have tried this now just just consider that the fact that what is a solar cell as i have talked about that a solar cell is actually an opto electronic device in which a light is incident on it so the so the source of so the excitation is actually the light incident on it and as a result as a result current is derived 
or we get a current from a solar cell. So what does it implicate? It implicates that whenever a solar cell is illuminated, actually uh, already we have discussed about the solar cell under no, current, uh, under no light or under darkness. So now we are considering about the illumination. Just recall that I am talking about when a solar cell is under illumination. What is the meaning of this under illumination? Actually, under illumination means now a, a light is incident on the solar cell. And this light, actually the energy of these photons, that is the H nu, is actually greater than or equals to the band gap energy. That is the energy difference between the conduction band and the valence band. That is VBI. That is the intrinsic band uh, potential. So now I, as I have, I have introduced or I have illuminated this solar cell. So that means that electron hole pairs. What I have discussed in my previous lecture. That is at lecture 7. So excess carrier or excess minority carriers are are originated now these minority carriers that means that means electrons in the p type side and holes in the n type side so now they are they are more dominant as because these carriers Am I audible? Please respond. Am I audible? There was a technical fault. And I have been left uh, from this video. OK, OK. Sorry, sorry. So let's. Uh, Okay, okay, fine. Fine, let's uh, discuss. So what I'm talking about that uh, whenever a, a light is incident or whenever the solar cell is illuminated, illuminated, excess electron hole pairs are generated inside the solar cell. And actually these excess electron hole pairs, these excess electron hole pairs are Particular, uh, particularly, they are the minority carriers. We have already discussed in our last lecture. So these minority carriers, that is electrons in the p-type side as well as holes in the n-type side. Now, as these minority carriers are developed or produced inside the solar cell, whenever the solar cell is illuminated, now what happens to these carriers? Actually, this is the reason that why I am talking about or why I am considering 
the flow of minority carriers in a solar cell actually so we have now we have two currents in a solar cell whenever it is forward biased one is the most familiar one that is uh, every time when we uh, we have encountered a pn junction under forward bias a large value of current is a large value of current flows through the junction from the p type side to the n type side and as we know that this is due to the flow of majority carriers and this current again i am mentioning this current is actually directed from the p type side to the n type side of the junction and now if this one that is this second current that is now this current is already generated inside a solar cell in a solar cell as because the cell is illuminated and this is the current which actually flows from within the junction or flows to the junction but from the n type side to the p type side as because the electrons are moving from the conduction band of the p type side to the n type side due to the reason that the electron electron sees that there is a downhill so as the as the electron moves from the conduction band of the p type side to the conduction band of the n type side this means that a current flows from the n type side of the junction to the p type side of the junction so this current that is this reverse current or rather this minority component current actually opposes the current which is the most familiar current in a pn junction under the forward bias condition now this current why this current arises as i have physically talked about that this current arises due to the generation of minority carriers or due to the generation of electron hole pairs whenever a pn junction is illuminated or whenever the solar cell is illuminated now let's talk about that this number of holes created per second within a diffusion length on the n type side so let's uh so let's wipe this out so now we are we are talking about analytical way we have already discussed about the physical aspect so now let's talk about some analytical manner so the generation if the generation of this carriers that is holes in the in the n type side that is in the n type side of the junction and electrons in the p type side so if the generation rate is capital g if the generation rate is capital g capital g and if the area of the semiconductor surface is capital a then the number of holes created per second number of number of holes created number of holes created per second okay so number of holes created per second within a diffusion length within a diffusion length of lp within a diffusion length of uh let's uh, take this lh for holes within a diffusion length of lh on the n type side is actually given by capital a into g into lh so this is the number of holes created per second within a diffusion length on the n type side again i am mentioning that this is the number of holes created per second within a diffusion length of lh on the n type side and where capital a 
is the area of the diode. Similarly, similarly, the number of electrons created per second within a diffusion length on the P type side will be A. So number of similarly number of electrons created per second within a within a diffusion length diffusion length of l e e for electron is capital a into g into l e so these are the number of holes and number of electrons created per second within a diffusion length of l h and l e inside the semiconductor and here capital g is the rate of generation or a generation rate and now uh, this is all about when the when the solar cell is illuminated with an incident light of energy h nu which is actually greater than or equals to the band gap energy of the cell that is eg fine now that means the total photo generated current this is the this is the number of carriers generated from the incident light so these are the carriers or these are the photo carriers that is the photo generated carriers so after after a, an incident of a light with the, uh, for a certain frequency of a certain frequency and these number of electrons and holes are generated now these number of holes and electrons are actually constituted the photo generated current and this current can be written as iph 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 that equals to so the sum of these two that is q into capital a as these are the numbers so the current will be the number of carriers into the charge that means q into capital a into g l h plus l e so this is the value of the photo generated current or <clears throat> iph now this current what i have talked about that this current is directed from the n type side to the p type side and this is or in opposition to the main diode current from the p type side of the junction so now what will be the net current or what is the total current therefore for an illuminated solar cell or for an illuminated diode if you remember that in the thumbnail of today's class i have mentioned pn junction and then solar cell and laser semiconductor laser so actually these two that is solar cell as well as the semiconductor laser is nothing but they are derived from the pn junction so now the total current that is the total current but you must mention that this is the illuminated current so a diode under illumination and the total current will be capital i equals to q into capital a into l h by tau h p n 0 plus l e by tau e n p 0 now e to the power q v by k t that is the boltzmann constant k k t minus 1 this is the main diode current what we have find in our uh, in our previous class when i have derived the diode equation for a so, uh, for a pn junction so this was the diode current and plus or rather this as this photo generated current is in the opposition of this main current so i must put a negative sign that is minus q into capital a into g l h plus l e so this is the net current or this is the total current when a pn junction is illuminated got it so as you can see 
that the current that the current under that the current for a pn junction under illumination is actually lowered by an amount proportional to the generation rate as because lh le q a these all are all are constants so this value of the total diode current or the value of the total current in a uh, in an illuminated form this current is actually lowered by a proportional constant of capital g so the generation rate due to this generation rate or due to this generation of electron hole pair the main current of the pn junction which is under forward bias and now only an illumination is allowed an illumination is allowed an optical and light is allowed to incident on the pn junction which is under forward bias condition and you can see that the, the total current or the diode current actually decreases by an amount which is proportional to the rate of generation of electron hole pair fine is it okay so soleman asked which current is greater due to reverse bias or due to minority carriers no i am i am not i am not talked about any current or anything about the reverse bias condition where from you get this reverse bias term i am not at all bothered i am not at all interested about the reverse bias condition of a solar cell actually i am talking about two currents or rather one current that is a pn junction whenever is under forward bias we all know that whenever a pn junction is forward bias a large value of current flows from the p type side to the n type side and this is due to the flow of majority carriers so this one is the current which is actually we are familiar with from our class 11 class 12 classes but now in this particular lecture i am actually devoting my time to discuss about the flow of electron hole pairs and these are the thermally generated electron hole pairs and these electron hole pairs are generated under illumination condition that is a light is incident to fall on the solar cell with a definite frequency of nu or rather with a definite amount of energy h nu which is actually greater than or equals to the band gap energy of this pn junction and that makes the difference this incident light actually generates electron hole pairs in the pn junction that is minority carrier so electrons are generated in the p type side as well as holes are generated in the n type side and there the mathematical equations are come across that is if the generation rate of these electrons and holes are capital g and if the area or the cross sectional area of the pn junction actually this a means the surface area of the pn junction in which the optical light or the light is incident so capital a is that area and if the diffusion length is lh lh for holes diffusion length of holes and le is the diffusion length of electron then the number of carrier generated per second is a q into a into g into lh that is the num uh, rather capital a into capital g into lh that is the number of holes generated per second and similarly number of electrons generated per second is capital a into capital g into le so the total current due to this generation of electrons and holes is actually iph iph is the photoconductive current so this current is actually constituted by the flow of these carriers rather these minority carriers or rather these photo generated carriers and this amount is iph equals to taking q a into g common this is lh plus le now as this photo generated current is flowing in opposition to the main diode current 
that is when the diode is forward biased i am again and again talking about the diode is only under forward bias with an additional impact of light incident on it is it clear so no i am not at all bothered about the reverse current or the reverse bias condition it means i only depend on g what i i means not i but iph yes iph if you are talking about this iph that is the photo generated current yes it is right you are right that this iph or the photo generated current is okay fine solomon so it is it is actually it is actually proportional to the generation rate or the photo generation rate so we have came across this value of the current and as you can see that the diode current so that the forward bias condition diode current is actually reduced is actually reduced now here that should be mentioned or rather i should mention that here i have eliminated two effects i have eliminated actually two effects when i am talking about this particular uh, particular section of this lecture that i have eliminated the generation and recombination effects i have eliminated the generation and recombination effects inside the depletion region actually when the pn junction is illuminated the light is incident on the entire uh, pn junction so here i have talked about lh and le that is these are the these are the neutral regions you may consider you may recall that these are the neutral regions that is the neutral region what is the neutral region neutral region is outside the depletion region within the p type or n type semiconductor so here actually generation of electrons and holes are considered or recombination of electrons and holes are considered in the neutral regions but i have deliberately eliminated that recombination or generation of electrons and holes inside the depletion region why i have eliminated uh, i have forgotten no i have eliminated this generation and recombination of electrons and holes inside the depletion region as because the rate of recombination and the rate of generation of electrons and holes in the p in the depletion region of this pn junction is actually counterbalanced is actually equals so uh, so this is of no importance that this generation of recombination of electrons and holes uh, may taken into account within the depletion region so i have i have skipped this part that i have eliminated the recombination and generation of electrons and holes within the depletion region okay so let's move now let us consider two particular cases uh, so Mm, so first of all first of all uh, mark these equations as 1 and 2 okay so now let us consider two particular cases what will be our particular cases of interest number 1 that is when the v is zero when the voltage is zero that means the short circuited case so for the short circuit current for the short circuit rather for the short circuit diode so case 1 is case 1 is the short circuit diode case so when this v equals to 0 when the voltage applied is equals to 0 what happens to this current let's find out so for a short circuit at diode if v equals to 0 for a short circuited diode let's put v equals to 0 so this is this is our case number 1 so when v equals to 0 that means the this current should be written as isc now as you can see if you put v equals to 0 here 
if you put v equal to 0 here that means e to the power 0 makes 1 and that one with this minus one they cancels each other so this total value of or the forward current will be zero that means we are only left with that photo generated current that is this entire term so we are left with this term so this short circuit current or isc that means this is actually equals to the value of the photo generated current ieph and it is equals to minus q into capital a into g into lh plus le is it okay is it okay so we have already found the value of the short circuit current that is by putting v equals to 0 v equals to 0 in equation number 2 and this gives us the current value or the short circuit value of the current or the so when the pn junction is shorted or when we apply v equals to 0 the current value is given in equation 3 and this is nothing but the current equals to the photo generated current IPH. So the short circuit current ISC is actually equals to the value of the photo generated current IPH. <coughs> Any doubts? Only one, two, or three students are only responding. Every time Dipanjan, Arindam, Soleiman, Pranob uh, earlier responded, but now Pranob is here. Okay, so now 26, 28, Madhumita Munshi, no sir. No sir, what means no sir? No sir means no doubts. Soleiman, okay, sir. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so, if you are responding, I think uh, I think it will be great for me. I am also charged if you are responding or otherwise Imtiaz Ahmed Khan. Okay, no, sir. Fine. Fine. So, so this is the value of current. Try to respond. Try to respond. Try to make communication. So, so this is the this is the short circuit current or when voltage V equals to zero. Now let's find out the value of the current when I equals to zero, or that means the for the open circuited case. So for the open circuited diode, let's put I equals to zero. So for Case number two, that is for the open circuit case, open circuited diode. Let's put I equals to zero. So if you put I equals to zero, that means Q into capital A into LH by tau H PN zero plus LE by tau E NP zero into e to the power q v by k t minus 1 this will be equals to q into a into g into l h plus l e okay so i am omitting this equation number two i have written it okay so we can cancel this q into a with this q into a fine that means e to the power q v that means e to the power q v by k t minus 1 e to the power q v by k t minus 1 is equals to capital g into lh plus le whole divided by lh by tau h into p n 0 plus le by tau e into n p 0 Fine. So, e to the power q 
क्यू वी बाई के टी विल बी प्लस वन विल बी प्लस वन नाउ एक्चुअली आई एम आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ वी एज बिकॉज in the open circuit case current is zero so we have to find out the value so we can get v or q v by kt by taking log so that means ln ln lh plus le whole divided by lh by tau h into pn zero plus le by tau e into np zero this capital g plus 1 okay so what is the value of v we can find the value of v equals to just putting kt by q here so this is the value of v now this value of v actually we get for the current equals to 0 or this is the open circuit case so we can write this v equals to v o c so we can write v equals to v o c or we can write here v equals to v o c that is the open circuit voltage and this is equals to kt by q let it be equation number 4 let it be equation number 4 and this equation 4 is the value of the open circuit voltage v o c and this is nothing but kt by q ln lh plus le divided by lh by tau h into pn0 plus le by tau e np0 into g plus 1 fine now from equation 3 equation 3 we get the value of isc or iph now what is the value of uh, what is the value of lh plus le if we find out the value of lh plus le from equation 3 we get lh plus le equals to iph divided by qag iph divided by qag so uh, i am i am putting the value of iph that is the value of equation 3 in equation 4 and we can simplify this v equals to v o c equals to k t by q into l n and then l h plus l e means minus i p h divided by q a g okay divided by now this value of current if you consider this current uh, this value uh when we have derived the diode current that is the diode equation diode equation as you uh, as you have find that the value of the current is i equals to is or i0 e to the power q v by kt minus 1 this was the actual simplified form of the diode equation where is is actually this lh by tau h into pn0 plus le by tau e into np0 that is was q into a it was q into a lh by tau h into pn0 plus le by tau e into np0 and then the term e to the power q v by kt minus 1 comes so this entire value that is q into a into lh by tau h pn0 plus le by tau e np0 is nothing but we can write it as i0 or is whatever written in uh, in each book actually this was the saturation current so in this particular section of equation 4 so we can write lh by tau h pn0 plus le by tau e np0 equals to equals to as it is is so we can write it as is by qa so here i am writing this lh by tau h pn0 plus le by tau e np0 as is divided by q into a okay 
and then the then the uh, then there it was g plus 1 so so i am omitting this part So uh, that means that Q into A, Q into A, then G into G, these all cancels with each other. And this means KT by Q into LN IPH by IS, uh, LN of IPH by IS plus one. This is the value. Uh, as because I can I can neglect this negative term because this negative term actually implies the direction of the photo generated current. So we can neglect this minus value and this becomes V equals to KT by Q ln IPH by IS plus one as because IPH is very greater than IS as this IS is the is the reverse saturation current here only this reverse current is taken consideration so neglecting the uh, so as ipH is very very greater than is so we can neglect the term plus one and we can write v equals to v oc nearly equals to kt by q ln of ipH by is okay I think this will be our equation five. So that open circuit voltage takes the form of KT by Q ln IPH by IS. So for a fixed value of this photo generated current IPH, VOC, actually VOC increases with the decreasing saturation current IS. And uh, an important uh, point to note in this equation is that although the band bending and energy position of the Fermi levels are similar to a forward bias diode, what we have drawn earlier, the current flow is in the opposite direction. It is this carrier flow that creates the potential VOC across the device and therefore, under illumination, the junction acts as a power source. Okay, now what will be the value of this power as we are talking about power, power, power of a solar cell? We can easily find out the value of the power. It will be P equals to I into V and the value of I is already find out. It was uh, P equals to I into V we can find out the value of the power that is I into V and you can write I as I S I S into V into E to the power Q V by K T minus one. And then, then the photo generated current that is minus of I P H into V. So this is the, this is the current, this is the value of the power what we have uh, derived or what we can expect from a solar cell. Is it okay? Is it okay? So just the solar cell topic, why we neglect what? Please say one more time why we neglect negative sign. Yes, I have neglected this negative sign as because a negative sign is uh, of utmost importance whenever we have talked about the flow of current as because this negative sign actually shows us, shows uh, me or shows us the direction of the flow of this photo generated current but uh, when we are talking about the voltage, when we are talking about the voltage, actually a negative voltage is of nothing to worry about because if we found a potential, uh, uh, a potential across two points uh, in a negative value, we can just, just uh, 
just reverse the position of the voltmeter and then the uh, then the voltage appears to be positive so whenever we are talking about voltage we are talking about potential we can neglect this value of the negative sign as because this negative sign has no implication whatsoever as we are talking about potential okay so may i continue as because i have already scheduled that this class is in this class i am going to discuss about solar cell as well as semiconductor laser but as i found that i have already crossed 1 uh, hour 10 minutes of time so may i may i continue for the semiconductor laser i think it will take uh, around uh, 20, 15 to 20 minutes more if i uh, make it uh, smaller or i skip some topics may i continue i am asking uh, you or in them no problem okay okay fine sir why the negative sign has been neglected imtiaz i have just now i have talked about okay 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 so let's uh, i think uh, i think you have no doubts whatsoever in this particular lecture of solar cell have you okay fine so now we are going to <clears throat> so let's move on to our second part of this lecture that is about semiconductor laser i think all of us know about a laser a laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation now here here many a terms are used that is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation now as we know that for a laser to happen as we know that for a laser to happen one thing one thing we must uh, make sure that is known as the population inversion you all know about that term population inversion population inversion means uh, if you are interested about this uh, particular topic of laser in this uh, my youtube channel you can find a lecture again a stream uh, streaming lecture on laser threshold condition uh, in that lecture i have discussed about the threshold condition of laser you just uh, you may across come across that lecture in any time you wish so uh, we have already discussed or we have already known about three different phenomena one is the absorption number two is the spontaneous emission and the third one is stimulated emission now absorption we all know that uh, a an a, a atom always absorb a photon and it can move from the lower energy state to the higher energy state if the two energy states are designated as e1 and e2 where e1 is the lower and e2 is the higher energy state then by absorbing photons from the incident light or from uh, from an incident light or incident radiation atoms can transfer from the lower energy state to the higher energy state provided provided that the amount of energy what the incident photon must carry this will equals to or greater than the value of the band gap energy that is h nu must be greater than equals to the band gap energy eg so this is the case of absorption and whenever the atom absorbs this amount of energy it actually it actually moves on to the higher energy state as i am talked about e2 now after going to it e2 or after moving to the higher energy state 
these atoms these atoms actually actually uh, spontaneously they leave their amount they leave their energy and they again come back to the original state that is e1 or to the lower energy state e1 and that is the process known as the spontaneous emission by spontaneous emission these uh, these atoms whenever they transfer from the higher energy state to the lower energy state actually then they only then they only radiates the photon but this photon is actually of no use whenever we are talking about laser as we know that this as this process is a continuously spontaneous one it is it is the radiation what we can uh, we can derive from this particular emission that is from spontaneous emission these photons are incoherent in nature so there will be no coherence between the photons whenever the photons are undergo or whenever the atoms undergo this type of spontaneous emission but we cannot prevent these atoms to undergo spontaneous emission so what from we get the laser or what will be the case of laser so under laser condition or under the uh, lasing condition we actually control this transition of atoms from the upper energy state or from the higher energy state e2 to the lower energy state e1 and what uh, uh, how this uh, how this control of emission of atoms take place we actually we actually make sure that the atoms what we or uh, the atoms which go transition from the higher energy state to the lower energy state actually controlled by us and this type of emission is known as stimulated emission actually the atoms which uh, stimulated uh, undergoes this particular type of emission what is called stimulated emission actually this stimulated emission is due to is due to the fact that so this is our semiconductor laser i have forgotten okay so under under stimulated emission again we act, uh, we introduce a stimulus of this particular energy difference of e2 minus e1 now this particular emission whenever incident on the on the atoms on the number of atoms which are in the higher energy state they absorb this amount of energy and then they come back to the lower energy state and as a result the excess amount of energy that is e2 minus e1 this amount of energy is radiated and this is as this is controlled by us this is a purely coherent uh, coherent radiation and this actually makes the lasing action this is all the known facts now so this lasing action to continue or to make a sustained laser we actually make sure that the number of atoms present in the higher energy state the number of atoms present in the higher energy state that is in e2 should be greater than the number of atoms present in the lower energy state e1 but this is not the physical or this is not the natural case study in nature or in practical we always we always find that the bottom of the energy states are occupied whereas the higher energy states are partly filled or vacant so but to lasing to happen we make sure that the number of atoms that is the population of atoms in the higher energy state should be greater than the population of atoms in the lower energy state and that is known as the population inversion that is known as the population inversion so we have to invert the population that is we have to make sure that the population of atoms in the higher energy state is always greater than the population of the lower energy state 
and for this to happen we have a number of uh, we have a number of processes and this is known as the pumping so the by means of pumping we actually we actually make the population inversion happens there are a lots of lots of processes for pumping that is we have optical pumping we have electric pumping that is electrical discharge so there are lots of processes i am not again interested about this pumping process we are actually considering these semiconductor laser in this particular class okay so <clears throat> so here again i am uh, i am talking about that how can this population inversion actually without without making or without uh, making this population inversion we cannot we cannot form a laser we cannot get a lasing beam so every time whenever we are talking about a laser in any form of laser it may be a gas laser it may be a semiconductor laser every time whenever we are talking about a laser make sure that there is a population inversion so this is the basic this is the basic uh, part of our lecture that how can we achieve this population inversion inside a semiconductor laser as because here also the population of photons the population of photons should be greater in the higher energy band compared to the population of photons in the lower energy state <clears throat> okay so uh, let's see that how we can achieve this population inversion at a pn junction now uh, i think again i have to recall one of our previous lectures in the lecture where i have talked about degeneracy degenerate semiconductor have you remember those who have uh, attend that class you must remember the term degeneracy and uh, some of you, you if you have missed that class of the semiconductor science you may go through again uh, to my channel and find this particular lecture on degeneracy so uh, just i am talking about that degenerate semiconductor so if a pn junction now i am going to form a pn junction with these degenerate materials so if the if degenerate materials are used uh, to form this particular junction or pn junction the forward bias energy bands what they look like so this is a p type semiconductor as we know that for a p type semiconductor for a p type semiconductor the fermi level lies the fermi level lies near the valence band but as i am talking about the degenerate semiconductor it means as i am talking about the degenerate semiconductor it means the fermi level should proceed or should penetrate inside the valence band of this p type layer so uh, let's let's uh, find this fermi level here so if this is the position of the fermi level i think those who have uh, those who have done that class or those who have attended that class you may find it easier that this is the position of the fermi level that is a p uh, a, a degenerate type of p type semiconductor and now if i am talking about the n type semiconductor so it is if it is the conduction band of the n type semiconductor and uh, this is the position of the valence band of the n type semiconductor what happens that again as we uh, know that if in uh, for an n type semiconductor the fermi level lies near the conduction band but whenever it is transferred into a degenerate type of n type the fermi level may resides here that is it may penetrates inside the conduction band so what happens the so the depletion region or the junction looks like this so the junction looks like this okay so this is the 
this is the if this is the depletion region you can find that there is there is i think let's draw this more perfectly <clears throat> if this is the position of the fermi level for the p type degenerate p type semiconductor and if this is the this is the n type fermi level layer okay so fine so this is the depletion region we know that this region is the depletion region now in this depletion region you can find that here here if you are talking about if just consider for this moment you are considering these two layers that is efn as the upper energy level and efp as the lower energy level just forget that ec and ev these two layers just forget this just wiped out from your mind just consider these two fermi levels these are the these are known as the quasi fermi states why this quasi because this is not actually happens whenever a degeneracy make sure whenever the diode or the semiconductor is degenerate then the fermi levels move inside the valence band or inside the conduction band in n type and in and in p type case now just consider these particular particular energy levels that is consider efn as the higher energy state and efp as the lower energy state and interestingly you will find that there is a inversion sorry so you will find that there is an inversion inversion appears across the junction why this inversion why i am talking about this inversion as because as because a p in a pn junction the p type conduction band is always resides higher energy state in the higher energy state and the valence band n type is always in the lower energy state but here whenever i am talking about this degenerate type of p type and n type and these degenerate p type and n type make this semiconductor junction and if we are considering the fermi energy levels of the n type side and the p type side you will find that the fermi level in the n type side is in the higher energy state whereas the fermi level in the p type side is at the lower energy state so that means a population inversion a population inversion is already created okay so these are the quasi fermi levels and uh, obviously the forward bias condition is a distinctly non equilibrium state we have already discussed about the forward bias case we have already discussed about the reverse bias case already discussed about the in equilibrium state so as we know that under a forward bias whenever a pn junction is under a forward bias condition it is basically in a non equilibrium state so this is nothing new so in a non equilibrium state condition we can find out this but remember always that whenever we are going to form a semiconductor laser the materials what we have to take these though the, they must be of a degenerate type of semiconductors okay is it clear
forward bias condition of this figure, it is a distinctly non-equilibrium state. The equilibrium equations, what we have derived uh, for the Fermi level or uh, what you can find in every books of semiconductor science or in uh, solid state physics, those, uh, those equations of Fermi levels or the positions of Fermi levels are not at all applicable for in this case as because this is a non-equilibrium state of equation, uh, non-equilibrium state of condition. In particular, the concentration of electrons in the inversion region is larger than equilibrium statistics would imply. Uh, exactly the same is also true for the injected holes in the n-type material. Okay. So this is the way actually, actually uh, you can consider this as well. Uh, if it is, you can consider this as well. So this is the, this is the energy difference or EG that is the energy difference between the conduction band and the valence band. And now, the Fermi level are lies inside one inside the conduction band and the other inside the valence band. So this is the position of the Fermi level for P type side and this is the position of Fermi level for the N type side. So the difference of energies between these two energy levels as because these are the higher and lower energy states. So you have to consider this energy difference that is Fn minus Fp. So the conduction band and the valence band are different. Uh, they are separated by an amount of energy Eg, whereas the amount of energy by which the Fermi levels are separated is equals to Fn minus Fp. So transition between levels in the conduction band up to Fn and levels in the valence band down to Fp takes place under conditions of population inversion. So for any given transition energy H nu in a semiconductor, population inversion exists when this value, that is Fn minus Fp, is greater than equals to of H nu. So this is the condition for population inversion exists. Now, for band-to-band -band transitions, that is transitions from the conduction band to the valence band or from the valence band to the conduction band, this band-to-band -band energy or this band-to-band -band transitions happen and the minimum requirement for population inversion occurs for photons as we know that the photons will have, will have energy H nu equals to Ec minus uh, H nu equals to conduction band energy minus the valence band energy that is whenever this is equals to the energy gap Eg. So Fn minus Fp must be greater than the value of Eg and from the figure it is already shown that Fn minus Fp is actually greater than the gap energy gap of the semiconductor when fn and fp lie within their respective bands as in this particular figure i have shown stimulated emission can dominate over a range of transitions so stimulated emission is dominated here whenever these fermi levels lie inside the particular conduction band or inside the inside the valence band then only then only stimulated transitions are dominated among and this stimulated emission can dominate over a range of transitions from h nu equals to fn to fp to h nu equals to eg so the stimulated emission dominate when the incident photon of intensity that is fn minus fp when the transit when the amount of incident radiation that is the stimulus when the amount of stimulus is greater than eg 
or up to the value of eg this stimulated transition makes had to happen now so the dominant transitions for laser action are determined largely by the resonant cavity so this is the amount of energy and this value of energy that is the minimum value of energy to make this stimulated transition dominate over the spontaneous transition or over the spontaneous emission is actually controlled or is actually governed by the energy gap by this value of eg and as you know this value of eg is actually the the characteristics of the resonant cavity so the resonant cavity is actually made up with this particular type of semiconductor and from the characteristics of the semiconductor or from the characteristics of the resonant cavity we can find out the value of eg and then by adjusting the stimulus that is by which the population inversion can happen or by which the stimulated transition is dominating over the over the value of the spontaneous emission we have to make sure that the incident radiation must have the energy maximum fn equals to fn minus fp to the minimum value of the eg and then only this semiconductor laser make sure that this semiconductor laser laser radiates lasing action okay so this is all about semiconductor laser in a nutshell uh i think everything is discussed here so uh if you want uh, one topic uh, under the semiconductor science syllabus of you uh, i have uh, checked that uh, with your syllabus that i have skipped the hetero junction uh if you want this hetero junction or if you want a lecture on hetero junction uh i have to devote one extra day that is uh it is due it will be on saturday next saturday but if you don't want this hetero junction uh then i can move on to another uh, part of your syllabus so what do you think i am uh, waiting for your response but as i have uh, told you that um, that uh, just don't uh, go for your attendance in the particular group in the whatsapp group as because if you are go on uh, posting your attendance there your roll number there present sir present sir there then uh, some of the informations might uh, might be overlooked by you all so uh, don't uh, you have to don't you have to post your attendance there we all are maintaining your attendances uh, 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 if i am taking your class on this uh, do not want so arindam pal do not want this hetero junction class okay fine so i am i am asking about this particular question if you want the lecture on hetero junction you just mention uh that in the whatsapp group you need not to be post you need not to post your attendance as because uh i am not wanting this attendance over the whatsapp group bear sir also i think bear sir also told you don't to post uh, your attendance or present so we have already uh, note down your attendance so you need not to post anything in the whatsapp group about your attendance okay so if you want uh, if you want that lecture just mention in in your whatsapp group so uh, till then uh, goodbye